All right, hey, what's going on, Blue Tubers? I wasn't, uh, didn't make a video last week, but um, been really busy and whatnot. I try to pour a, uh, try to get a pour on video, but something happened with my camera. I didn't, I guess I didn't click freaking capture, so I tried to pour. I was speaking to pretty much no one because uh, when I tried to record, I guess I didn't hit record and it wasn't recording, but this is my, uh, uh, Hold on a second. Let me connect my computer here because it's done. All right. I try to connect. I tried to uh, capture it early. Like I said, this is my pale ale, um, uh, my IPA, excuse me, that I made uh, for the Double Brew Day Memorial Day. Um, this is an earlier um, uh, bottle that I took out. Uh, it was only about three or four days um, old when I uh, took it out and I drank some of it. I keep it in this. Um, the one liter plastic bottles here. Some of them I put in glass bottles, some of them I put in the Perrier bottles so, so I can send out. Um, I have the flip top bottles that I keep in those as well. Just less bottling because bottling, you know, when you first start your first brew or your second brew, you're kind of excited to bottling and after that it really becomes a chore. But um, so this is only three or four days old. This beer, when I put it in the fridge and I took some of it out and it's been sitting about halfway filled. Uh, for about a week and a half. I checked on the other bottles. Those are really good, nice and carbonated. So I didn't want to bust one of them out because uh, uh, they weren't cold and they would have to sit in the fridge a few days to kind of condition and whatnot. So I'm drinking this one. It's young. My first taste of it, it's uh, 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 um, not as hoppy as I wanted it to be. Because if you remember, I had the, had that screw up with my Citra hops. And then I never got out to my home brew shop uh, to go pick up some Citra hops. Because uh, the one home brew shop that I go to all the time, uh, he didn't have any. He was he was out. And then the home brew shop that I, the another home brew shop that I really don't go to. I really don't like how they do things. I um, uh, They were selling it for like two eighty five an ounce. I'm like, dude, I'm not paying 285 an ounce for, for some freaking citra hops. Uh, and I wanted to dry hop it with that so I can get some aroma. So there's really no aroma. Um, uh, I had a little bit at first when I first uh, cracked this bottle open. Um, uh, carbonation was, was good. It's still good carbonation. Um, it's a little light, but of course that's only because it was only three to, three to four days old when I bottled it. But it's got... Good bubbles, good tight bubbles here on, on the side of the rim. Uh, I do get some of the honey malt that I put in there. So some sweetness coming through. Uh, no hot aroma at all really, but it smells like a beer. Um, on the taste, I also get uh, on the back, the, the middle of the tongue type of, uh, on, on my palate, I get some sweetness from the honey malt. Um, it's a pretty... It's a little bit dry finish, but the bittering hops are there, so I do get the bittering from the citra hops uh, on the back of the tongue. So it turned out a good beer. I thought I ruined it because uh, um, uh, what I didn't show in that in that brew video is that I uh, accidentally added too much. I only, I'm always showing up the water calculations, but I uh, screwed up the water calculations. I added too much water, and then also of, in the middle of me mashing in, I researched my mash ton. The ice cube igloo mash tun that I use supposedly, and I read on some homebrew talk forums that they said, yeah, it's fine for mashing, but they uh, people said that it it uh it left about a gallon uh, of wort behind, so they said to add about an extra half gallon to a gallon or or a quarter gallon, I should say, and that's what I did. So after I did the sixty minute boil, um, you know, flame out and all that, as I was you know cooled it down, and then as I was um, um, put it in my fermenter I was at about five and a half a little bit over five and a half gallons and the recipe called for five gallons so of course it was a little water down a little diluted so of course I didn't hit my mat uh, my uh, my final gravity uh, final gravity although it was about I came in at about four percent uh, 3.8 percent or something like that um, my stout uh, which I bottled I let that sit a little bit long, um, try to have a lot of the 
because that's the one I put the citra and the Willamette, uh, Willamette hops in at the same time for 60 minutes. So I know it's going to be bitter, but I tasted it on a hydrometer sample. Um, so it was at room temperature. It tasted great. It had a good malt, uh, you know, feel. Uh, the body, um, malt taste, the body wasn't there, but then again, it hasn't got bottle conditioned or anything. So uh, I have to check on that. I'm going to do a review in this video for the stout. After I put it in the fridge, um, so this not this is not a homebrew Wednesday. This is gonna be uh, a homebrew Thursday, but I'll mark it as a homebrew Wednesday. Um, I'm not gonna drink two beers today because uh, I kind of stopped drinking throughout throughout the week um, because uh, I'm starting to go back to the gym and hit the gym harder and trying to lose a lot of weight. Um, so um, you know, I just want to drink on the weekends, uh, not get trashed. Every once in a while, I get trashed, you know, but. Um, so I'm going to stop drinking throughout the week as much. I'll have a beer for Homebrew Wednesday, of course. You know, you can't do that. But I didn't want to have two beers. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I was thinking of making a channel about my... I didn't want to do it on this channel about me going to the gym and, and nutrition and stuff like that. Um, I was really big into it before when I was in the military, when I was in the Marines. And then I just kind of like let go of everything when I got out. But, um... Uh, uh, I'm getting back into it, so, and I know that I'm in it for real this time because it's all I think about now, you know, that and home brewing, it's like, that's all I think about is the gym and, and eating healthy and stuff like that. So, um, I'm not going to do it on this channel. I might um, uh, create some videos and add a, add a different channel, um, and I'll put that channel, if I do do it, I'll put that channel in my, like, other channels below type little thing. Um... So that's all I got. Let's take a look at my hops. Oh, one more thing. Um, I do have my Mama Wanna video that I'm going to post. Um, I was going to use a wine that I had here that we cracked open um, last weekend. Uh, but I didn't like the way it tasted. It was really dry red wine. And I really didn't like it. Um, and it was really alcoholy high alcohol legs on it and I didn't like it because I'm going to uh, I'm sorry Emiladius is who I sent my Mama Wanna mix to so I'm gonna put his link here and he can explain what Mama Wanna is um, let me grab my bottle real quick and so this is my Mama Wanna uh, bottle um, it comes in a nice little pretty sleeve but under that is just a bottle um, that I sent the stuff that I sent over to Emiladius. Um, what you do is just a whole bunch of um, this comes. It's a drink from the D Dominican Republic. It's some tree bark, um, some leaves and stuff like that that you condition with honey, um, a rum, and a wine. And it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be it cures a lot of stuff. Uh, like I said, for more information on it, um, because I you know I sent it out to Emiladius so he can and he's good at explaining things more than I am. Um, and he'll be able to tell you about it. I'm gonna make a response video, but this is my. Uh, this is the. Sometimes they put sleeves on them in the Dominican Republic because it's not a cool drink. It's a shot that you take, um, and um, so that you keep it out at room temperature or, or whatnot. And um, they put sleeves on it, like this, because if it sits out in the sun, it it, it gets kind of all jacked up and tastes funny. So they put sometimes they put sleeves on them like this to make them look pretty. People just put sleeves on them or they keep them in a, in, in, in a bag and some people create little sleeves like this with paintings on them with natural, um, uh, with the native uh, uh, Indians from the Dominican Republic, the uh, Taino Indians. Um, so you see a lot of designs and stuff like that on it. And then you also see some of the uh, Dominican flag. And so it's a lot of history. Sometimes people write a lot of history. It's almost a story behind the, uh, the sleeves that they put on here. So um, I'm going to make a response video to that, not in this video, but um, let's take a look at my hops real quick. And um, so the wine that I'm going to get for it, I keep jumping back and forth. So the wine that I'm going to get for it, it's going to be a little bit of a sweeter wine with uh, not a dry finish because um, Emiladius used some spice rum. And uh, so it's not as sweet. Some people use rum and then the wine and the honey and Sometimes it's too sweet, and I don't really like sweet drinks. So I'm going to do a white rum, uh, um, and then a sweeter but not as sweet wine to kind of balance it out, and then add, I'm going to add regular table honey to it. 
So uh, let's take a look at my hops, and then we'll come back and do the review on the stout. All right, guys, really quick uh, update on my uh, little hop garden here. As you can see, it's not just a hop garden anymore because uh, I got some uh, plants put up here. Some tomatoes, a couple of tomato plants here. I have no idea what these are. My uh, father-in-law came and planted them. And uh, got some really big leaves here. Really, like, foamy type of leaves. And uh, these are little flowers coming from I have no idea what they are. There's another tomato one here. This is my cascade. Um... I wasn't getting a lot of vertical growth. Um, I just just bushing up like crazy down here at the base. So I decided to trim um, some of it back. And in the process, I guess I followed the wrong uh, leaf up, uh, string up. And I accidentally cut, you see here, I accidentally cut <laughs> the actual strongest, uh, the strongest uh, string here that I had. But uh, I got a couple more. I got three, four strings on here. Actually, yeah, four strings on here. And there's about uh, three strings on here on this uh, rope here. So uh, this one's doing really good. As you can see there, this one's doing really good. Uh, it's still got a ways to go. So I know it's only uh, June, but I really don't expect a lot of, uh, I really don't expect. I was hoping to get a few on uh, a half ounce or so out of these plants, but I guess not a little bit something just to throw in as a, or maybe just a little bit something to throw in as a uh, aroma hop, but uh, then I got some strawberries here and then some more couple of tomato plants, this is the same plant as the other one, but this one's not as big uh, this one's small and it's closer to the front and I sometimes I forget to water it, <laughs> so I think that's why uh, it's not growing as much uh, this is the Centennial here. Uh, this is coming along good. Um, there's, this one kind of stopped growing vertically, but uh, there was really nothing to cut back um, here. So I really didn't, I didn't, I really didn't touch anything. Let me get up, see if I can get a better view here. I really didn't touch anything. I got a couple of vertical, uh, horizontal vines coming up here. Um, but uh, then I got the one little one coming up here and this one so there's only two uh, strings up here two strings coming up this rope here um, and they actually split off from oh no that's a whole new one there so yeah and then I expanded it I actually took this here that kept crossing over I took it and uh, planted a couple more here so uh, in the future I'll be able to maybe uh, so now I got all this. So now I got, let me back up here. So now I got this this base that I used to have uh, that I pushed over against the house. And now I have all that area. And I get really good sunlight coming up here. So I'm going to expand uh, some of my gardening stuff. Uh, maybe put another pole there. Um, see if I can get a whole bunch of different hops growing at one time. So that's all I got for the hops. All right, guys. Now we're back. Yeah, so uh, my hop garden. Uh, so I'm kind of pissed off about those Cascade hops, but what am going to do? It was actually the longest vine growing up there. But uh, I have my stout here. This is my Memorial Day stout that I brewed with my uh, IPA. Um, tasted good coming out of the uh, out of the uh, sampling. The hydrometer that I when I took a sample when I was bottling, I just bottled this on Sunday, so I don't expect much of a head or head retention. But it's a stout, so we'll see. Not much of a hit on there. Let's get this in a glass. Just a little bit of a hit. Yeah, no, I get nothing. But uh, <laughs> there it is. This is the first time. I didn't expect much because uh, it's the first time I actually opened a, a glass early. I'm sorry, a bottle early. And I didn't get anything of a head. But something's coming up here. I got some carbonation going in there. But it's a stout, so it, it, you know you don't even need that much priming sugar to begin with. So uh, I didn't expect. So I guess that's what I get for that. Um, through the light here, let me see if I can get this light closer. Through the light here, as you can see. I get, whoa, there we go. 
It's it's a dark red type of a type of a. Hold on a second. God damn it. I'm going here. Yeah, it's a light red kind of a taste. I'm um, sorry. Look. It's got a pretty good nose um, for just uh, bittering hops, but that's the citrus coming through more than anything else. Um, it's a dark. It's it's like a Guinness uh, per se for when it comes to to style, uh, to color, where it's black, but when you really look closely up to it, it's really dark, dark red. So yeah, I do get the citrus hops on there. Some of the some of the uh, Willamette hops, kind of earthy tone. Let's give it a taste. And that's pretty good. Tastes like a stout. I really, I really want to see. Really want to see how this tastes in a couple of weeks or in a month or so. Uh, I actually, I didn't bottle these too much in the in this um, these bottles. I bottled more in the cold style bottles with the swing top bottles. Um, so, so let them age a little bit more. Um, it's got a it's got a chocolatey stout. Um, you know, it tastes like a stout. Um, the mouthfeel is not there. I don't know where that could be from because I did put the uh, flake barley in here. So uh, that's where I was, and I was gonna put it in my in, in the IPA, but I didn't get to. Um, I didn't get to. I switched it up. I guess I got it confused when I was um, making my my rest putting my recipes together. So um, it tastes good. I know it needs more time. I don't get any of the honey malt that I put in this one, but it is a little sweet. So I get a, like a sweet chocolate um, uh, mouthfeel to it. There's no body. Um, so. My wife is calling me. So. All right. So. I was able to, you know, so I was able to get this one right. This was the first one that I brewed uh, on Monday, on um, Memorial Day, and I'm surprised because that's when I was the most kind of freaking out of it. But uh, it came out pretty good. Uh, I know some of the, the the honey will come through more because with the first bottle uh, that I opened on my IPA, I didn't taste any honey malt at all. So maybe it just kind of needs to sit in there and let it uh, and let it mature a little bit, and more of it will come through. Um, there's a high alcohol kind of a taste to it. Um, let me get a different. No, it's probably more of the malt than anything. But there is a multi, really malt, multi backbone to it. Um, and I'm getting some kind of roast, it's roasted. Some I'm getting some kind of roastiness from it. So, um. Maybe when some of the honey kicks in, kind of balance that flavor out. Um, besides that, I got nothing else going. Actually, uh, I do got one more thing. Give me a quick second. I finally got one of these puppies here. Look at them wood chiller. Um, this whole time since I've been brewing, I just I have a fridge down here in the basement, so I've been throwing it in the fridge. Um, it's really compacted, but you know I'm stretch it out a little bit. Um, uh, and it just and it came with the attachment with it. Um, for the hose and then for the outlet and then for the outlet I have from extra leftover from like a uh, I think from like a yeah uh, got one of these to attach to it so I can run it in some some buckets to collect the water to clean after and whatnot because uh, I've just been doing it I've been doing uh, the black IPA that I did was actually a no 
no um, no cool down. It was just, I let it naturally, I just boiled it, covered it, put saran wrap around it so nothing will get in it. And I let it sit for about a day and a half um, for it to cool down. And it cooled down to, when it, when it cooled down to about 75, 6 degrees or so, uh, I pinched the, uh, I pinched the yeast then. So, it's just, sometimes it's a pain in the ass uh, waiting for it to cool down. Because I throw it in the freezer on the fridge I have down here. And uh, the fridge just gets to working so hard because it's, you know, it's really hot. It gets, I put something really hot in there and it takes a long ass time to cool down. So, uh, then I just really want to just get brewing, you know, get it cooled down to the temperature that I want so I can pitch the yeast. And then just and put in the fermenter and just pinch it the same day. This way I'll be able to do, because I was, it was a really late night uh, that night that I brewed those two beers. So if I want to brew two beers again, I know I'll only have to wait 20 or so minutes for it to, uh, for it to cool down. And then I can start my next batch. Uh, and while I'm waiting on, on that to cool down, I can just, uh, uh, you know, set up the mash for the next um, brew and whatnot. It's just convenient, more convenient for me. Um, I do have the, uh, the, the pump that I got from, uh, I forgot the name of the, I forgot where I got the pump from, uh, but I'm going to wait on that, um, cause I was, I was actually going to get a, um, plate chiller, but I just didn't have the setup for it. I, I'm not set up. I don't really, really have a brew stand set up. And then I w was going to buy that turkey fryer thing that I got. It's not even mine. Uh, uh I just wanted to hold off. I was going to get one that I want to hold off because I wanted to build a brew stand. Uh, not as elaborate as hockey players, but uh, it's going to be a, a gas propane type of thing. Um, I just need more of a setup and I just got somebody to I know somebody that works with uh, steel and welds. So hopefully I'll be able to get some kind of setup there. If even it's just a two tier brew stand, um, uh, I'll be able to, you know, get that going there. So that's all I got. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Cheers.